We've already written code that generates QR codes for our users based on their name and email address. But with a little bit more code, we can also allow users to long press this QR code image and save it to the photo gallery so it can be shared with friends and otherwise used. To do that, start by opening up meview.swift, then find the image that generates the QR code and add a new modifier to the end, dot context menu. We're gonna add one button here. The action for now will just be save my code and add a label to it, which will be label save to photos with system image even of square dot and dot arrow dot down. Now in terms of actually saving the image, we can reuse the same image saver.swift file we made back in project 13 instafilter. That contains all the code we need to save images to the photo library done neatly, wrapped up smoothly so we can use it in SwiftUI without worrying about the nitty gritty of UI kit. Go ahead and grab that file, drag it on into hotprospects.swift, uh, hotprospects project, sorry, and press finish. If you haven't got that file from project 13, you can get it from my site under instafilter, or, I mean, that's all the code. Just copy that if you want to, it's down to you. Anyway, with that in place, we can now go ahead and fill in the button action over here. When we say save my code, I'll start by calling the same generate QR code method, this one here. Boom. So put my on my clipboard and do let image equals paste that thing. Then let image saver be a new image saver. And then image saver dot write the photo album image that image. And we're more or less done. Now we could save a little bit of work on the computing time by not calling generic QR code twice, once here and once here. Because if you think about it, when we remake the Q QR code here, we've already made it to show the image in. Otherwise, there'd be nothing to press on for the context menu. Um, but there's a better reason for doing this other than a little bit of performance boost because it is very, very fast. And that is our format's very, very precise. It's name, then a line break, then email address. And we had to put that same format here and also down here, which isn't great. If you think about it, if we change anyhow, like having another line break, then perhaps their uh, GitHub name or something like that, I don't know, phone number, um, it wouldn't work anymore because it's now more complex code or if email address and name were switched around, it'd be really confused. And so having this duplication isn't great. So we're gonna write some code that will generate a QR code once and cache it. To do that, add a new property at the top, at state, private var QR code is an empty UI image. And now we're gonna modify the generate QR code method so that rather than just sending back the image it was made, we'll actually cache it first. We'll do this, uh, QR code equals that UI image, and then send back the cached version. So now the image says, what shall I draw? I'll ask generate QR code. This thing silently copies the made code into its cache and then sends it back. So it's silently caching things here. And now, our QR code, uh, sorry, our context menu up here, can just remove this whole the image line and instead say, write a photo album, the QR code, like that. So we're reusing it. And that code will build cleanly and it will run, but it's not great. If you go to the Me tab, you might see why. Over here, there's this large blank area now, our cache is not working. And uh, more seriously, over in Xcode, you might see this purple warning triangle has now appeared, and it's pointed to the line of code just down here, which says we're modifying state during view update, which might cause undefined behavior. Now, undefined behavior is a fancy way of saying this could behave in any number of weird ways at runtime, so don't do it. You're losing all the predictability of your program right now. Do not do that. This happens because we're telling Swift it can load the image by calling generate QR code. And so Swifty Wild will be saying, okay, give me the body for your view here. Okay, I've got a nav view, which has got a form inside it, then a text field, text field, then an image. 
And what does the image show? Well, let's ask generic QR code. So it runs down here and runs generic QR code. And it gets to this part here, we take our cache. And this thing, while it's running the method generate QR code, while it's updating the body of our view, modifies QR code. And this is an at state property, which means Swift UI will have to re-invoke the body property to, to respond to the QR code changing. So it was halfway through doing the body, and we said, nope, it's changed, and it'll start again. Now, uh, this is a serious problem, because if you think about it, uh, We've got a bit of a loop here. The body is running, gets to here, uh, generates a QR code. That QR code changes an at state property, which requires us to reload the body property. Go back to here again, starts again, da -da -da -da, gets a QR code, has to change the QR code again, the cache, change the property again, 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 again. It's a bad idea. It's a, it's a really messy idea. And this is why Xcode's flagging up to us. Please, please don't do this kind of code. So the smart thing to do is to tell our image, don't make the QR code dynamically. Instead, use the cached QR code. Make the view, when it appears, generate the QR code. And whenever name or email address changes, make the QR code. But don't do that as part of the body property of our view. So we'll say there's a new method down here called update code. This will say the same thing we have up here right now. I'll just take this whole chunk of method call here, bang out. I'll say QR code equals that. So it's neatly centralized. With that in place, we can now undo this change down here to store it in the cache. This thing will not do anything with caches anymore. We'll just do return that, send it back as before. Our QR code line up here can do image is UI image QR code. And finally, importantly, we're going to add some modifiers after navigation title. When our view is shown on appear, perform, update code. And then on change of name, we'll do underscore in update code. And on change of email address. Email, email address. There we go. Boom. Update code. And so we're saying when the view is first shown, make the QR code. When the name is changed or the email address is changed, update the QR code. But don't do that as part of a view body update. This is perfect for our needs. It makes much more sense to try to change some state while Swift UI is updating our view at the same time. Now, before you try this yourself, please make sure you add the project option that we had an Insta filter to your hot prospects target. You've got to tell this thing uh, a permission string, can I save photos to the user's library? If you don't do that, you'll get a hard crash. So you want to select hot prospects on the left, go to the hot prospects target, then go to the info tab over here and right click on an existing key. Here's one ready for doing camera usage. Right click on there and choose add row. And you will scroll down for privacy, photo library, additions, usage description. Can I add photos to your library, please? Boom, that one there. And then give it a text. Uh, we want to save your QR code. And again, iOS will only show that when the user actually tries to save an image. So they'll know I pressed save. Of course it prompts me. It's not a surprise to them. And now being well, this step is done. I'll press Command R to build and run the code again. And we should see we can long press on our QR code over here. This one, boom. There, save the photos. I'll press that now. Do you want to save photos? Yes, I do. Go ahead. OK. And it's done. I can go to the home screen, go to the photos tab over here. And there is a nice warning from Apple. There is our QR code working nicely. You see it's a bit blurry because it was rendered very, very small, remember? That's what it would have liked without the image interpolation in place. That's what it's doing behind the scenes. It's stretching and blurring the pixels. Anyway, with that in place, our new QR code uh, context menu works correctly. Long press, then choose Save Photos.